If you haven't read the problem yet or you need to reread it, please pause the video before you continue. In this question, we're asked to find the x and y components of the vector sum of these two vectors. And why don't we go ahead and label these vectors just to keep track of them. So we can call this first one vector a and this one vector b. In fact, they've already got those labeled for you. Now the best way to add vectors is to break them into their components and put those components into a table. That might sound a little complicated, but after some practice it's quite straightforward. So what we'll do is we'll construct a table in which we break vector A into its X and Y components, vector B into its X and Y components, and then down here we're going to have a row for the total. Now the question states that this angle right here is 30 degrees and that the magnitude of vector A is 10 meters. And those are exactly the two pieces of information we need to find the x and the y components. So it's helpful to come off onto the side and redraw the vector, just to get, uh, get it out of the way from the original clutter of the picture. Now again, vector A has a magnitude of 10 meters, and it's acting at a 30 degree angle. Now what you want to do is you want to draw in the x component right here, and then also the y component. And in order to find the magnitude of the x component, you're going to have to use basic trigonometry. So recall that the cosine of an angle is equal to the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. And in this case, we're looking for the adjacent side of this triangle, and we are given the hypotenuse. So we can go ahead and plug in the information. The cosine of 30 degrees is equal to the x component divided by 10. If you multiply both sides of this equation by 10, those tens would cancel and you're left with the x component equaling 10 cosine 30. Plugging that into a calculator returns a value of 8.66 and that's in meters. Now go back to the figure and you can see that the x component is pointing to the right and that means that it's a positive value. It's extremely important to note that. Had the x component been pointing to the left it would have been a negative 8.66 but in this case it's pointing to the right. So we're going to go ahead and plug in positive 8.66 into our table. To find the y component, we can see from the figure here that the y component represents the opposite side to our 30 degree angle. So we need a trigonometric function that involves opposite and hypotenuse. And of course that is the sine function. So the sine of an angle is equal to the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. Again, multiplying both sides by 10, gives us the y component. You can see the y component also points uh, upward, so it also has a, a positive value. And if you plug 10 sine of 30 into your calculator, you should get 5. So we can plug positive 5 into the table. Finding the components of vector b is a little more difficult because of the direction that vector b is pointing in. Vector b is pointing up, up and to the left, and it's acting at an angle of 105 degrees. So the picture here is a bit more complicated. So this angle right here is 105 degrees, but that's not actually too, uh, terribly helpful. So what we'll do is we'll come down here and remember that this was a 30 degree angle. And from some basic geometry, recall that if you have two parallel lines and the third line cuts through them, whatever this angle is will be equal to that angle. So you can see that the 30 degree angle here will be equal to the 30 degree angle there. Adding these together would give you 135 for that whole angle right there, which of course means that this angle is 45 degrees. We're going to proceed in a similar manner to find the components of vector b. So vector b has an x component right there and then a y component there. Using some trigonometry, once again, we have the cosine of 45 degrees equal to the adjacent, which would be the x component, divided by the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse was also 10 meters, as stated in the problem. When you solve for this, you should get 10 cosine of 45 is equal to the x component. And plugging that into a calculator gives you 7.07. as the x component. But note very carefully that the x component of vector b points to the left. 
So that means that the sine uh, of, of the x component must be negative. Again, that's extremely important. So we're going to put negative 7.07 into the table here. For the y component, you can see that the opposite side of this triangle would represent the y component. So we need a trigonometric function with opposite and hypotenuse. As we saw before, that's equal to the sine. And the angle is 45 degrees is equal to the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. And so uh, the y component ends up being 10 sine of 45. Look carefully, and the y component is pointing upward, which means that it is positive. So we have 10 sine of 45, which is 7.07. .07. Now to get to the total, you simply add down the columns. So if we take the x components and add them together, we arrive at 1.6 approximately for the total x component and then for the total y component we would end up with 12.1 approximately.